How do you test new Facebook ad creatives in 2024? Today I'll be going over my exact process. We'll be diving into the ad account and showing you step by step on how exactly we test new Facebook ads in 2024. I spend roughly $2 million a month between my team on Facebook ads and all of our clients that we work with. And I'm gonna show you exactly what we do from account to account. Let's dive in. So I'm in one of our accounts right now. This is more of like my YouTube account that I just make videos off of because it's not one of our actual client accounts right here. And I want to show you guys really quick, just how it's structured. So if you go watch my video, how to, uh, you know, run Facebook ads in 2024, like my Facebook ads strategy, 2024, you'll see how we like, structured. So we do one CBO campaign uh, per objective. We also do like one CBO campaign per country. So yeah. And this is one of our objectives. Um, this particular store right here, the best performing product is this infinity sign. So we only push this infinity sign and we use our email and SMS to sell all the other products in the store. So I just wanted to show you case that really quick. So we go to our CBO campaign. You'll see we have a lot of different ad sets running. Each one of these ad sets is a different creative test. Each creative test either won or lost. And the things that are still active are the things that won. I'm just gonna scoot over. We'll go over to, I had one right here, 159. Let me show you guys how we set this up. So just scrolling through, um, make sure websites selected. You know, there's some people that's doing website and shop. I'm seeing like small cases where like the website and shop is working. And I'm also seeing small cases where like just websites working. Try it out. I would just do it once and see. But we mostly do like website across 90% of our accounts. Form its goal, max minus number of conversions, select your pixel, select your conversion event, which is purchase. You should not be optimizing for anything other than purchase unless you're doing like Legion or something like that for a completely different niche. Seven day click, one day view, impressions. Uh, make sure you turn on dynamic creative. And then, yeah, pretty much from here, uh, select the country you're advertising in. Select the age range uh, for this particular product. Anyone can purchase in this age range, so it doesn't matter to me. I just leave it all. Uh, we have like one account where like we can't legally advertise to anyone below 60. So like we have to do 60 plus. Uh, we have other accounts where just there's just no reason why we need to target a certain age group so we just leave it 18 plus gender this is a unisex product means anyone can purchase male or female uh but was how that had like a men's clothing brand i would only target men unless i decide to run another campaign for female and target as like the perfect gift for your man but just giving you examples right there languages just leave it on all and i do advantage plus placements right there this is where the net magic starts to happen um so we have our ad set now, here's how we structure our creative itself. So we have three different photos and all or you know, this could be three videos or three photos. I get this as a question all the time. Do you have to do photos or videos? Uh, the reason why is because when my copywriter makes the plan for the creative, she writes it with the intention of it being a video or photo. Like if I go write a video script, how the fuck am I going to turn that into a photo? You know, it's a lot of shit that needs to be displayed. So my video editor takes that script and goes make the video for it. That's it. We roll it out. If I go write a photo script, how do I turn this into a 30 second video? You know, just doesn't make sense. These questions we all ask. <laughs> and the reason why we only do photo or only do video is one, it keeps the variables under control. Like these are all split by one variable. Uh, so like, for example, they all have the same hook, which is give a sentimental gift to those you love. They all have the same hook. It's just different designs. So like our, um, you know, like variable we're testing is, you know, essentially just the design of the particular image right there. Three creatives, all videos, all photos. And then from there, split it by one variable, right? And all of our different tests, like we do and stuff like that, like all of these have different dynamic creative tests. Some are videos, some are photos. So it's not like we need to do dedicated photos or videos for that whole campaign. Some of our dynamic creative tests are a video. Some of our dynamic creative tests are a video. We do not test video and photo per concept. So like we don't do like a DCT for video and a DCT for photo. It just kind of comes down to our concept idea. Like there's no reason why I need to do a video for this. Maybe if I had an idea of like her unboxing it and crying and reacting to it, cool, then I can go do a video. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna put in two primary texts. Uh, so one of the primary texts needs to be an existing winning copy. And then the other primary text needs to be a new copy that goes with that particular concept. If this is like our second DCT test and we did a DCT test for this particular concept right here, and then we found a winning creative, and then I wanted to create an iteration off of this particular creative right here, or like, I don't know, maybe we wanted to change this color right here to like black, green, and red, right? So I have three different creatives in here. 
I don't need to add in another primary text because we already know what primary text works for that particular concept. So I'll just do like one primary text, one headline. Uh, I get that question sometimes as well. If I do like an iteration off a of DCT where I just change one little thing, what does that need to be? Um, same thing for the copy. Like if I, if I want to keep the, the image the same, like I know this image works, I might just add in this one image and do like two or three primary texts that are all different to test just a primary text. And then like I said, one's new and one is an existing winner. And same thing for the headline. One's an existing winner and one is new. That's it. And then we let it roll. Now, the way we do it is we like to look at launching two or three of these a week. There's a stigma that the more you test, the better the results will be. That's completely false. The more you test does not mean better results. There's a higher probability of you getting better results. Yes, but it doesn't mean better results because what will happen is, is you get the idea of, oh, I'm gonna go test like 20 new DCTs a week and you just put out a whole bunch of shit, right? Like I put out three YouTube videos a week, but if I put out three a day, the quality of them would be substantially lower because I'm just trying to pump them out as quickly as possible. And I would not have the following we have today. If you look at like some of these YouTube channels, they post one video a week, but the video gets a couple million views. Why? Not because they build up a following, because they know how to make a video really well that people want to share and people want to, uh, you know, talk about. I try to focus on one to three DCTs a week of very high quality. And you may have to go through a period of time where you test more per week just to get your hands wet into creative testing and then understanding and learning of how to build better creatives to eventually to where you can tone it down to one to three a week where they're super high quality each one. I can only tell my team to build one a week. It, you know, it's rare we do three a week now. Last year, I was doing two to three a week every week. Oh, some weeks I was doing two to three every three days. But now we're really focusing on quality. What I look for is I essentially look for what's getting majority of spend. So like this ad set right here is getting majority of spend. So that's good. Me and you can both agree that because this is getting majority of spend, this is going to impact overall performance. So what I mean by overall performance is, is we have one campaign in the account or one campaign per country, or one campaign per objective. When this particular ad set gets majority of spend, it's going to impact our cost per purchase overall. And overall performance is going to go up or down. And what do I mean by overall performance? So what I recommend for everyone, literally go into Google Sheets. I'm going to create this sheet with you guys. So I don't have people in the comments, can you get the sheet, Nick? No, you can't have the sheet because I'm creating it right here in front of you. Um, all you're going to do, type in date. You'll type in Facebook, ad spend. And then you'll type in Shopify, revenue. All right. And then we'll see ROAS. Okay. And this is going to be mostly for people who have like one product stores. Um, we have a sheet that's built out and I say one product source, you can still do this with multiple product stores. Um, but for people with like multiple countries and multiple stores, uh, this would be like slightly different, but this will apply to like 90% of people right here. So what is the date? I should say it's one, one, 2024. We spent a hundred dollars. I'm just going to do this really quick. Da, da, da. All right. And then we did $500 in revenue. And then what is our ROAS equals, we'll do that, divide by that. We had a five ROAS, okay? Now, what's cool about this is, let's just fast forward to, there we go. And then like, let's say we spent like another $100 and another $100. And then like maybe this day we did $200 in revenue and $200 in revenue, right? And then, oh, Nick, what happened? Why'd ROAS drop so much? Well, it was like, maybe on this date, we had this particular date right here. I always leave notes and there we go. That's the sheet. I have this daily. All right. Well, what happened? Why did performance go from this to this? All right. Yes, it might've been a Facebook fluctuation and just overall trend, like New Year's performance was terrible for us. That's normal every year. But what would happen if we had a new DCT test take majority of spend? And because that new DC test is taking majority of spin, overall performance is negative. So like if I go look at the account, oh, on the second, we had, you know, uh, DCT 159 took off, right? So since we did that, we had worse performance. So now that means we need to turn it off because performance has hate. So I literally just go in the account like this, so simple, and just turn it off. I just click this and go, boom, turn off. I'm not gonna turn it off because we're still testing this. But that's all I would do. And that's it. And then guess what? Performance, let's say, hypothetically speaking, 
performance picked back up. So boom, boom. And then we went back to like $500 a day. Cool. And then maybe I start like scaling spins by 20% a day. So boom, now we're doing like, I don't know, like 550, <laughs> something like that. Um, yeah. So, and then here we could say turned off DCT 159. Boom. So now I know, okay, hey, when DCT 159 took off, performance got worse. We let it run for two days to fully optimize, still didn't do good. We turned it off, performance shot back up, and there we go. That's it. So that's how I do it on a daily basis. You don't need any attribution software or anything like that. You can immediately see an impact on the business. It's going to apply to like 90% of you guys. Um, now, those with like five different countries and like 20 different campaigns, that's where you need something like Triple Well to further help you just fully attribute it. Um, but I would say 90% of our accounts are like this with like two or three campaigns. You know, maybe it's split by country. We can still see the impact of revenue on USA, impact of revenue on France, impact of revenue on the Netherlands, and we're good to go. So yeah, that's how we do it. And look, same thing here. Um, so like, you know, vice versa. Like maybe if DCT 159 took off and ROAS improved, um, that's good. And then we just leave the DCT on because it's working. It's improving overall performance. And that means we can spend more and we can make more money and yeah this is a simple sheet right here you guys can set up i do this every day every day we track our spin our shopify revenue um and with the overall performances overall ROAS. um and then you can also add like your google spin you can also add like your tiktok spin all of those good things and that allows you to just technically see what's working what's not um and then you increase budget 20 percent a day as long as you're hitting your target ROAS of uh, what you know was good for you to be profitable and then yeah that's it it's very simple <laughs> you know, we spend 10 to 15 minutes a day in the ad account and the other eight hours and 50 minutes, we're doing like, like I'd say like 10 minutes a day is on the ad account. Eight hours a day is on uh, like research and 50 minutes a day is actually like writing the ad that we're going to put in the account. Yeah. So like we spend a lot of time researching, storyboarding, coming up with ideas and a very, very, very few of those ideas actually come back to the team and come in the account because we can test much higher quality because it's a higher probability of converting and making more money for our clients. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're interested in my advertising agency running your Facebook ads, click the link below, have Nick Terrio run your ads, or my mentorship program where we do a monthly mentoring of uh, helping you in your specific situation. Um, and then lastly, I have my Facebook ads course too as well, which just recently launched that's more for like our intermediate to beginners. No monthly mentor or anything like that. It's just a course by itself. But yeah, all those links are below. And hope you guys have a good start to your New Year's. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.